What's going on everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you my extreme mode build for Greedfall. So this build will get you through the extreme mode, obviously, and get you what is more than likely your final achievement for the game. Or at least one of the more difficult ones to get. Now that said, this particular build will actually kind of make that achievement trivial. It's not a hard game at all at this point once you use this. So, um, obviously bypassing our, you know, appearance, because that's not really important to this at all. Next step. So, on the first real choice, we are going to pick the technical tree. Um, we're not even going to use everything on this, but this gives you the best starting skills and you have to pick something. So, we're going to pick technical, hit next step. That brings us to our attributes. So, we're pretty much going to focus entirely on accuracy and endurance here. So we're going to alternate between these two as we get these points. And then the game usually ends around level 35 if you do everything. And if you do that, it'll actually give you a few extra points, um, in which case we'll probably put those into willpower. But for most of the game, you're going to be alternating between accuracy and endurance. And then for our talents, what we're going to do is we're going to pick up science immediately because we need to get science to level two as quickly as possible for our talents because science level two is what allows you to craft bullets which is the main thing we're going to need because we are going to be using firearms on the technical tree it's going to be our main thing but in order to do that consistently you have to be able to craft ammo because the way they gate firearms to you is by making ammo a little scarce however but if you can make your own it kind of completely removes the problem that brings us to which skills you should actually be using. So obviously we just went over attributes and talents, but like our actual skill wheel, what are we doing? So technical gives you points in one-handed blades, which we're going to completely ignore. We're not using this at all. Firearms, which is where we're going to start, and set trap. Now set trap isn't super important, but it is pretty useful during the early game, especially when larger uh, mobs or you know, multiple amounts of enemies are coming up at you. Set trap is actually really good for that. But the main thing is we're going to start with firearms. We're going to move all the way up to where the branch splits off. So we're going to pick up precise calibration, destructive shot, impact bullets, and rifle. Then we're going to pick up roll. So roll is the non-magic user's improved dodge. Now when you dodge, the base dodge is okay, but roll and lightning dash are the upgraded versions of dodge where you'll move way faster and it's just way easier to get away from things. So we're going to pick up roll and basically just double tap dodge uh, and this will work. And then after that we're going to pick up galvanizing fury and then we're going to stop. Everything else down this tree sucks. but. We want Galvanizing Fury because it increases the fury generated by all attacks. Now, fury is, of course, uh, the power attacks you can get by using um, your abilities so many times you fill up uh, fury charges, which will then let you use certain abilities. And then when your fury gauge is completely maxed out, it can use your top tier abilities, which are these three abilities with the circles here. Now, the catch is... Firearms do not get a regular fury attack, so it is important that we fill our gauge as quickly as possible, which is why we're picking up Galvanizing Fury. Then we're going to come down to where we have our set trap line at. We're going to pick up Fast Traps, which will let us uh, put traps down immediately. Uh, destructive Elemental Preparations, which increases the damage on those. We're going to pick up Seismic Magic, which increases the damage on those. We're going to pick up Economical Alchemy, which basically lets you pick up ingredients whenever you use these things. Then you're going to pick up Vile Throw. This changes your, uh, well, it, in addition to being able to set them on the ground, you can actually just throw them at people, which is helpful. Uh, and this is actually what I recommend using because when you're using firearms, you should actually be trying to get away from enemies as much as possible. So that's why Vile Throw is actually very useful for us. Then we're going to pick up Light Grenades, which helps us throw vials from farther. Uh, Mephetic Discharge, which basically just gives poisoned... Uh, traps in general, more poison damage. Extended alchemy, uh, stasis alchemy, which makes your alchemy tra uh, stasis alchemy traps last longer. Devastating grenades increases the area of, of effect of uh, your traps. And then finally we have bomb. Bomb is awesome, does a ton of damage, and like I said, it, it costs your entire fury uh, gauge to use. 
But what it does, it hits multiple enemies, and when we pick up Powerful Bomb and Toxic Bomb, it increases the radius and also poisons everything it hits. But the main thing we're going to use Bomb for, honestly, is just ripping through armor. So on Extreme Mode, enemies tend to have a ton of armor, especially the bosses. Bomb will get rid of tons of it at once. Now the armor system in this game um, is actually kind of similar-ish to Divinity Original Sin 2 in a lot of ways. At the start of combat, based on the equipment you have, everyone gets a certain amount of physical armor. Um, attacks uh, will actually do damage to health, of course, which is where it differs from Divinity Original Sin 2. But the physical armor that a character has will reduce percentage-wise the amount of damage your attacks are doing. So when you break through all of their armor, suddenly your attacks are doing full damage and you're doing way more damage overall, which is where Bomb is really going to help us out. Now, once we get to here, because this will actually happen early in the game, this doesn't take super long to fill out that particular part of the tree. We're actually done with it at this point, all of our technical skills. We're actually going to move over to Stasis. Now, what Stasis does is immobilizes enemies, yes, even boss enemies completely, though not for very long. Boss enemies are usually looking at like two seconds. There's a bit of diminishing return on those for bosses. Now, it'll completely stop them from moving, and then later on we're going to get uh, perks that will add uh, armor destruction while Stasis is active, as well as increasing the damage of the next hit from an enemy in Stasis. So from here we're going to pick up Stagnation, Corrosive Emanation, Perfect Incantation, and Crystallization. Which, like I said, uh, lasts longer. The next hit they uh, take is 50% extra damage. It's just awesome. Then we're going to double back over here to Magic Healing, which, uh, of course, heals us. And then we're going to pick up Purifying Healing, which cleanses poison. Divine Aid, which heals more. Steel Healing, which healing uh, using the Magic Healing spell will arm, uh, restore armor. And then we have our group healing. Magic healing will actually heal all of our party as well. This is awesome because it'll keep you from chugging potions, which is a bit of a problem on extreme. Um, a lot of people don't realize this, but these two spells, like you don't have to be wearing divine magic rings, which are the uh, rings that let you use magical attacks. You don't have to be wearing those in order to use these two spells, which is where they're great. Now, any points you have left at this point, you're going to go through all of this Shield of Enlightened skill, but we're not actually going to use any of these. We're only grabbing these because that puts us on the closest path to Storm. Storm uh, sends a shockwave causing stasis to everything in combat near you, which, for obvious reasons, because we have upgraded stasis, is awesome and should be used as an alternative to bomb when you're facing enemies that either A, don't have any armor left, or B, don't really have a lot of armor to begin with. And then that's actually where we can stop. Uh, once we pick up Storm, that's everything we need. Anything after that is just honestly anything you want to throw points into is fine. Most of it you're not really going to use. That is all the skills you need for this build to work. So uh, from here, I'm just going to show you guys some gameplay footage of me fighting a boss. Uh, basically, because we have so many bullets from using our science talent, uh, it becomes a non-issue, and we can just repeatedly spam attack after attack after attack with the gun. It does a ton of damage because we're shredding through armor with bomb. We're using stasis to slow the enemy down and uh, basically position ourselves in a better place, range. Even on extreme mode, we're not really taking a lot of damage simply because of the amount that we've just mitigated through being away from them. So. Here it is guys, I'm going to let the rest of this fight play out, but there it is, man, my extreme mode build for Greedfall. I certainly hope you guys enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun playing this, and this is actually how I got the final achievement for Greedfall before I hit 100%. I do have one more video planned, it's kind of a little something new for me, um, so I'm hoping I'll get that out pretty soon, but... We'll talk about that when the time comes. If this is the first video of mine you're watching, I certainly hope you subscribe and stick around, but have a great day either way.